Ciao everyone and welcome back to Rome. Today we're going to show you an incredible and unexpected ancient Roman ruin that you can see simply by strolling around the center of Rome. You can see the Pantheon over there. This is one of the most photogenic corners of this area. We are in the Centro Storico, the historical center of Rome. To be exact, in the Campus Martius area. Campus Martius means land of Mars. Mars was the god of war. And this is in fact the area where the Roman soldiers used to exercise. And this is the only area of Rome, together with Trastevere, which has been uninterruptedly inhabited since ancient Rome until today. And what does that mean? It means that you could potentially encounter ruins from any era of the Roman history in here. Ruins from the Roman Republic and Empire, ruins from the Middle Ages. The Middle Ages is the period following the fall of the Roman Empire. We can find Renaissance buildings, Baroque architecture until the 20th century, until today. And this is what makes a stroll in the Centro Storico so special. But today, in particular, we want to show you one of these ruins, which you can easily reach from the Pantheon. So this will be a little, a, a little itinerary for when you are here in the Pantheon Square. First of all, make sure you visit the Pantheon. It is an absolute must. It is often crowded and you need to be ready for long lines, but it's totally worth it. This area in ancient Rome was populated mostly with public buildings, such as the Pantheon, for example, which used to be an ancient Roman temple. The Romans didn't really build dwellings in here because this area was very often subject to floodings from the Tiber River, which is the river of Rome. So they dedicated this area to public buildings so that no dwellings will be destroyed or damaged during these floods. In fact, if you Google Pantheon flood, you will find black and white pictures shot in the 1800s where you can see how the Pantheon and other buildings used to be partially underwater every time the river was flooding. The river today is not flooding anymore because containing walls were built at the end of the 1800s on its sides, on the sides of the river, to contain the water. In the Middle Ages, though, the population hadn't been as forward-thinking as in ancient Rome, and the city center was built in this area too. So you can imagine people were living in here and imagine what was happening when the river floated. So this area in ancient Rome was dedicated to public buildings, one of them being the Pantheon, a temple dedicated to all the gods, which later on, in the year 609, was turned into a church and still is a church today. The incredible thing about the Pantheon is that inside is almost intact as it was in ancient Rome, except from the Christian symbols, which of course replace the pagan symbols. But now, uh, as we walk alongside the Pantheon, we will end up in this square and this square is called Piazza della Minerva. So in the middle of the square we can see uh, an elephant uh, sculpted by Bernini which is supporting an obelisk. This elephant has a very fun and curious story and let us know in the comments if you'd like to have a video about that. But now let's walk past and let's continue on this street because that's where our hidden gem of today is. In this street, which is called Via dei Cestari, you will find several shops selling church items. Now what you need to do is to walk until the end, until you find a street which is called Via dell'Arco della Ciambella. Because this street is where you'll find this. Where else on the planet can you witness something like this? Ancient, embedded in modern in such a natural and casual way. This street, in fact, features one of the most spectacular ruins from ancient Rome, incredibly embedded into modern buildings. But what did these ancient ruins used to be? What building was this? These walls belong to a circular room. In fact, if you look at the upper part, you may notice that the walls go into a curved shape. This circular room was part of the first public thermal baths of Rome, the Baths of Agrippa. Agrippa was the right-hand man of the Emperor Augustus, the first emperor of Rome. And he inaugurated these baths, listen to this, in the year 19 BC. 19 BC, do you realize how long ago is that? To give an idea what the building looked like, uh, look at this reconstruction. Here you can see uh, that uh, there used to be a big circular room in the middle, which is the one that we're looking at right now, and then a series of smaller rooms around it. Because when the Romans were going to a thermal baths, they were doing the same route as today, more or less. 
they will go from a lukewarm room to a warmer room, then they will go back to a cold room and so on. There was a specific route to follow. We don't know exactly what this room was dedicated to, but most likely it was the frigidarium, the cold room. But the real mind-blowing curiosity of these thermal baths is another one. In fact, Agrippa needed to provide water to these baths when he built them. So he built also a new aqueduct for that, to uh, provide the water, to bring the water in this area. This aqueduct was inaugurated in the same year as the baths, 19 BC. And if you know Rome, even just a tiny little bit, for sure you know this aqueduct very well. I'll tell you why, because in fact, the aqueduct we're talking about is the Virgo aqueduct, the same aqueduct which provides the water to a lot of, mo of the most famous fountains of Rome. To mention one, the Trevi Fountain. How incredible is that? So the aqueduct that used to provide water to this very thermal bath in here is the same aqueduct that still today makes the water jump out of our beautiful Trevi Fountain. And right below the ruins of the thermal baths, we have one of these Madonella. You have hundreds of these uh, all around Rome. Madonella literally means little Madonna, and is this, uh, are these portraits of the Madonna in different shapes and sizes, surrounded by uh, frames uh, of different kinds. Uh, smaller, bigger, sometimes the frame is bigger than the portrait himself. So uh, these Madonellas, they are in here to protect the neighborhood and it's usually maintained by the neighbors living in the area. But this tradition actually happens uh, since ancient Rome. In ancient Rome, of course, they didn't have the Madonnelle, the Madonnas, but they had some uh, gods that they used to venerate exactly the same way with these frames. And they were called the Lares Compitalis. And these gods were in the streets to protect the crossings of the streets of Rome. And this tells you a thing or two about how the traffic was crazy already back in the, in the times of, of ancient Rome. We hope you enjoyed this little itinerary. Just let us know what you think of it and if you had the chance to see these ruins in person. Also tell us, what would you like to see in the next video? Tell us in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and enable the notifications to get more insights on Rome off the beaten path. Thank you so much for watching and ciao!